Hi, this is Mrs. Davies at the Outdoor Learning Center, Avon Schools in Avon, Indiana. We are talking about rocks and minerals, and I wanted to run through a kind of fun experiment that you can do at home to try and identify some common Indiana, or Midwest even, minerals and rocks. So um, you're gonna need a couple of tools to do this experiment. Let me highlight those here. You are going to need a steel nail, I found one in the junk drawer at home. Uh, you are also going to need, whoops, um, some vinegar, just regular kitchen vinegar. And if you can put it in some sort of a dropper, that's great. If not, uh, just have a bowl ready so that you can pour some on your rock. Uh, you might need a paper towel if your rock is, is wet. And if you happen to have a swimming pool or you know someone who has a swimming pool, you might want to ask them if they have some hydrochloric acid, which is uh, a chemical used to keep swimming pools clean. So um, you got to be a little more, more careful with that than you do with vinegar because it can irritate your skin, but you do get a good reaction if you're trying to identify rocks and minerals by using hydrochloric acid. And is this going, there we go, let's pan back out. All right, we're gonna use something today called a dichotomous key from the Latin word di meaning two. And um, of the way a dichotomous key works is it asks you questions and each of the questions has at least two outcomes and so however you answer one question will lead you to a second question or to a solution or a resolution or an identification in this case so our um, dichotomous key for rocks and minerals starts out question number one it says scratch your rock with a steel nail. You may have to scratch it very hard or more than once. And so the two possible outcomes here are either your rock is easily scratched by the nail and it leaves a groove. And if that's the case, you're gonna jump down to question number two, or if your rock is not easily scratched by the nail, but the nail leaves a silver mark, like you tried to draw on your rock with a pencil, then you're gonna drop down to number six. So what we're testing here is how hard the rock is. Um, a previous video I mentioned or talked through Moe's scale of hardness and um, basically all rocks are and minerals are somewhere on Moe's scale so number one being talc which is very soft number 10 being a diamond the hardest natural structure known to man so what we're trying to do um, in that video I also mentioned that a steel nail has a hardness of a 7 to an 8 so what we're trying to determine is is the rock tougher than the nail so we're going to start uh, I'm going to do this experiment a couple of times. I may end up doing it on separate videos, but I'm going to do it first on my favorite holy rock right here. So it says to get in there and to scratch it like you mean it. So I am going to scratch it a couple of times, and I don't know if you can actually see this on video, but if you look there, you can actually see I am making dust, and I am forming a little bit of a groove right here on the rock where I was rubbing it with the nail. So that indicates to me that the rock is softer than the nail. The nail is actually able to dislodge parts of this rock so I am going to answer that yes my rock is scratched by the nail and it leaves a groove so I'm going to go down to number two number two says if uh, scratch the rock with your fingernail if your rock is easily scratched or broken by your nail and it's black or lightweight then your rock is coal okay we'll stop right there because this is not black and it feels like a rock. I would call this tan or gray, but it does feel rock size. It doesn't feel light. So I'm gonna go down here to the next possible outcome. If the rock is not scratched by your fingernail, then I would go to number three. All right, so I like to experiment. I'm gonna try this, even though I'm pretty sure this isn't coal. I'm gonna try scratching this with my nail and seeing if I can break off some of the rock. And I'm actually getting a really bad manicure. I can feel my nail is actually being roughed off by that rock. So the rock is harder than my fingernail. Now, I'm a pretty healthy person, so according to Moe's scale, my fingernail should have a hardness of about a 2 to a 5. Remember, the nail was a 7 or an 8. My fingernail is about a 2.5 or a 3. So the rock is somewhere in between my fingernail and the nail. It was harder than the nail, sorry, harder than the fingernail, but softer than the steel nail. So let's go to number 3. Number 3 says, if your rock is wet, dry with paper towel my mine is nice and dry 
And then you're gonna put a small drop of vinegar or hydrochloric acid on the rock and observe what happens. So the two possible outcomes, let's get this all the way in here, is my rock is either going to fizz and bubble or it's not gonna fizz and bubble. And if, if it fizzes and bubbles, then I'm gonna go to number four. And if it doesn't fizz or bubble, I'm gonna go to number five. All right, well, I have a little container of hydrochloric acid right here because I was at the pool store and got some from them. And I'm gonna put a couple of drops right here and I'm gonna see if I can hold this up so you guys can see it can you guys see the little bubbles that are starting to form in there um, it's getting kind of cloudy on the surface it's forming little bubbles sometimes it bubbles right up and makes a great big reaction this one's not reacting crazy but it's reacting pretty good so this one is fizzing so that means I'm gonna go down to number uh, four and it says, look carefully at your rock. Here's the two possible outcomes. If your rock is yellowish white or clear and has a square shape, then you have the mineral calcite. Well, this isn't really square shaped and it's not clear. Uh, the other possible outcome is if your rock does not look square and is gray, then your rock is limestone. And um, so this is a hunk of limestone. And what I was just doing with this reaction right here with the hydrochloric acid is exactly how caves get formed. And I mentioned that in another video, I said I was gonna talk about how all the holes got formed in this piece of limestone. These are mini caves, right? So what happens here is that the hydrochloric acid gets in contact with the rock and it reacts to the calcium found in the rock and um, it actually turns the calcium into a liquid and so that water and hydrogen dioxide are the effects of this chemical reaction and we would need to get out a microscope and collect the moisture there, but it's actually weathered the rock a little bit. It's actually caused a chemical reaction that's changing the calcium in the rock into a liquid for a short period of time. And so it's carrying part of the rock away. And if we could leave a drip of hydrochloric acid on this rock and come back a couple of years from now, we would find another hole starting to work its way through. So just think about how much time it takes for a hole like this in a rock to form or a cave. If you've ever been to the caves down in southern Indiana or uh, other parts of the country, Florida has a lot of caves too. Also, a lot of limestone in both Indiana and Florida and we get this chemical weathering happening of our rocks and our stones around here, and then erosion also can uh, happening as it carries it away. If you've ever been into a cave that has uh, stalagmites or stalactites, those are actually the calcium that's been leached out of the rocks or chemically weathered out of the rocks. When they dry out, they reform in calcium and they form spikes that either hang from the ceiling of a cave or grow up from the floor. Uh, if you guys remember when we were doing this dichotomous key, one of the other possible Possible outcomes was calcite and um, I said that ours wasn't calcite because it wasn't yellowish and it wasn't clear and it wasn't square well I happen to have a hunk of calcite and can you guys see how the light actually kind of shines through that calcite breaks or cleaves and the crystal formation is very straight it kind of looks like a bar of soap with a little bit of an angle to it I don't know if you guys can see it it's not exactly straight it's got a little bit of an angle um, but that's classic calcite and I wanted to show you what happens when you put vinegar or hydrogen or hydrochloric acid on this because it's a really good reaction so let me because this is all calcium. Isn't that crazy? Can you hear it? I'll put it up by the microphone so you can hear. So again, chemical weathering happening. I don't like to put a lot on there because I don't wanna wear away my cool chunk of uh, calcite. All right. Uh, dichotomous keys that one was limestone and calcite I will do a couple more videos to um, test some other some other rocks in here so that we can run through this a few times together